Hello and welcome back to Mersey Beta Gardening. How are you doing? Um, today um, I thought I'd give you a tour of the home garden, our garden here at home, um, um, which we've not featured much actually on Mersey Beat Gardening. We, we, have, we do have a playlist by the way of the home garden um, which I'll put at the end of this video but we haven't actually featured it much um, so I thought I'd give you a little tour because in many ways the home garden is where um, our gardening year starts or I've got certainly what we do on the plot actually begins here in the home garden this is usually where we we plant all our seeds and seedlings and get them off to a start before transferring them onto the plot and um, yeah I want to talk a bit about the importance of growing stuff from seed as opposed to um, you know buying them at garden centers which is all very well and good if if you haven't got the time to grow stuff by seed but it's a lot more expensive also, you don't get the choice that you get if you go through seed catalogues and, you know, you, you go it down the, the heritage and heirloom varieties, which you can't actually buy at most garden centres. So the choice you get at garden centres and um, online uh, retailers is, is limited to what they are actually sowing and what they grow what they're growing in their greenhouses and to, for sale um, but if you want true true choice choice of um, vegetables and flowers and everything else then you really have to grow them by seed because there are so many varieties out there um, that are totally unique and things you wouldn't find anywhere else unless you grew them by seed and so that's an important thing and uh, to grow them by seed obviously you have to have a, a system in place to do that um, you know places to um, uh, uh, sow them places to store them um, grow them on and various things like that so we do that in the home garden and if you saw the heritage um, tomato video before this one um, them heritage seeds were sown here and then we transfer them down to the plot uh, for sowing up uh, in, into the raised bed as you saw um, heritage seeds are a perfect example of how or heirloom seeds are a perfect example of how you you control the choice of what you want to grow which I think is very important from a gardening point of view is that you control the entire process from from the choice of seeds to the growing of plants to the harvesting and to the enjoyment of these wonderful flavors and wonderful you know just watching seeds uh, and plants grow and and through the entire life cycle it's a wonderful thing um and it's it's something that can't be underestimated. I I would say it's a, it's one of the great joys of of gardening. You know, it's um, it kind of um, it, there's a there's certain amount of poetry in that. And every plant that you grow grows differently. Every variety grows differently and has different needs. So it's a never-ending learning process of how to to grow stuff. You know. Um, so we're in the, the home garden and one thing you'll notice about the home garden as I take you around is that everything, virtually everything that you see is in pots and virtually everything you see has been grown from seed. Not everything, but a lot of, a lot of the stuff has been grown from seed. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, what I'll do is I'll just I'm sitting on on the bench here on our little um, raised area here um, 
we've had a lot of rain recently and um, this garden is uh, prone to flooding Mo most of it is concrete most of it is concrete so that's why we have to go in pots so um, uh, we're in a con concreted back which is when we moved in here there was nothing here there were no plants here virtually no nothing um, and so a garden basically is where you plant stuff and, and turn it in. You can turn a backyard into a garden or a back alleyway into a garden. A garden is where you nurture life. Not just the, the, the plants that you grow, but the wildlife that it attracts in and everything else that surrounds that, you know. Um, uh, it's, um, once you start planting stuff in a backyard or on a, in a concreted area, it transforms into a garden. It becomes a garden. It's no longer a yard, it's a garden. So um, I'm sitting here on the bench uh, and what I'll do is I'll just spin you round and give you an overview of the garden as we go on. So I'll just spin you round now and you can have a look. Here we go. Uh, decorated sheds, we're into that. And um, our Byron shed over there. Uh, so this is an overview of our back garden here um, lots of areas to plant stuff so um, what I'll do is um, I'll take you round and um, let's see what we can see this is our Bronte shed which is unfinished no coward soul is mine um, yeah Emily Bronte uh, so it starts here at our potting bench where all the magic basically happens. Uh, pots down the side, this really needs sorting out uh, kind of thing. The, this is catmint, smells gorgeous, but we've put it up here uh, because I don't know if you have this problem, but we have cats. <laughs> well, we don't actually have cats. Our neighbours have cats and they, they continually use our garden as a way to on their rounds at night and they just absolutely devour this stuff and if I don't put it up here then we we find that they actually destroy the plant and the plant pots are going everywhere they're rolling in it this cat mint is like it's a it's a narcotic for cats if you've ever grown cat mint you'll know they they are obsessed with it and they go crazy for it so we have to put it up here just to protect the plant just so that we've got something hopefully by the end of the year it's it continues and hopefully it'll come into flower um we don't mind breaking bits off and giving them to the local cats which we often do we cut it back at times and give that and just put it out for them to um enjoy um, I've got here, this is the, this is the potting bench, bench uh, various um, trays and stuff down here. Um, and here, these are going to go into the plot. So a lot of the stuff you'll see today will be going down to the plot. But we're just sort of like, uh, we potted them on and we're just waiting for them to get a bit bigger before we actually transplant them. But within the next week or so, or a couple of weeks probably, we'll be... Uh, planting them out on the plot and these are pumpkins here uh, butternut squash here uh, red, red cena, uh which is a cucumber which is a mini cucumber pickling cucumber growing there um, here we've got um, watering cans now we've had a lot of rain recently so what we've done is taken the water the rain water out of the water butt which you'll see later and fill these up, these watering cans, um, just to allow more rain to fill up into the, the, the water butt, basically. So we, we're just maximizing our, the amount of rain water that we've got because we've had very dry periods recently. So there's a tip for you. Fill up your, uh, your um, watering cans and allow more uh, water to come into your watering butt just to just to um see th this is a cat see this cat here that's not our cat 
that's our neighbour's cat and uh, she just comes out and hangs out with us uh, <laughs> yeah hangs out with us all day virtually till it's ready to go home for tea time so she's just hanging out with us there um, we've got some more um, uh, cucurbits over here that are, are quite young but they'll be going out as well in the near future so here these seedlings go all going out into the plot a bit young at the moment but in a few weeks time they'll just shoot up uh, this is a um, pitcher plant which we've had for a few years actually uh, and it grows in mossy conditions um, bogland, bogland conditions they're pretty hardy these leaves need cutting off here but they catch flies uh, pitcher plants catch flies and insects and that's how you feed them you don't feed them by using fertilizer they're actually fly catchers and they the flies they, they have a, like a sticky sweet substance that the flies are attracted to and they eventually they fall in and they can't get out uh, it's, a, it's a terrible way to go but that's how it feeds and for the first time this year it's actually coming into flower so it's it's loving it here um it needs sorting out probably possibly repotting i don't know if anyone's got any of these but when we went to um glasgow to the botanical gardens there they they've got absolutely ginormous collection of pitcher plants it's a fascinating thing to get into um these uh sort of like um carnivorous plants uh, they're, they're really interesting i think uh, to have at least one and the more hardy than you think um yeah so that's there that's been there for a few years again we've got our heritage tomatoes here that will be th these will be staying here um these are what we featured some of these in the last video that's uh rise and straub and heinz 1250 um uh, de blue and black opal uh, these are all heritage varieties all growing from seed uh tagetes here now somebody mentioned on the last video that the gaps in the raised bed we should fill with flowers and i was thinking of tagetes because tagetes or marigolds are a companion plant to um tomatoes and they um they deter uh, kind of um, insect pests and stuff like that so th they work well together so I'm thinking about putting some tagetes into that raised bed and some uh, uh, Vescaria which we've got over here which I'll show you in a minute uh, um, yeah Vescaria uh, these are um, purple queen dwarf runner beans and I think we're going to put them in the plot today I'm going to take them down to the plot today then uh, they're big enough to go in now uh, this is a uh, I think it's called sedum sedum uh, which is we got this in a uh, can't remember where we got them actually but they're great for green roofs and stuff um, we've got them growing up these uh, little drain pipe holders here see that and uh they're great. You can just break these bits off here and plant them and they'll just carry on planting. They, they're self-propagating in that manner. And, um, we've got a tray here of uh, Mitsuma and uh, salad greens, which really should go out. They should go out possibly today. We we'll hope, hope to get them out today. Uh, yeah, in, in here, in this bucket, we've got what are these um irish lumpers irish lumper potatoes we saved some tubers from last year and we planted them out again this year so um we've got irish you can see a very much a vegetable theme going on here <laughs> uh, so yeah we say if you save tubers from one year and take carrying them over to the next year it will cost you nothing to to grow our water butt 
handy slimline water butt is here um, and that's absolutely full now because it's been empty for over a month it's been empty it filled up literally within a day because we've had really heavy rainstorms thunderstorms as you will know um, we've got leaf salad growing in this tray here and we put it deliberately in the shade because we don't want it to bolt if it gets too hot this leaf salad this is a cool um, leaf salad Mitsuno and um, uh, various types of fast growing veg if it gets too hot they don't do well so we don't want to get them overheated um, some geraniums and stuff growing here in hanging baskets um, over here our, our garden extends out of here by the way and so uh, this is a little extension that we like to to go right the way down to the roadway there uh, with wildflowers and um, uh, stuff like that sort of a naturalistic approach um, we've got some herbs here some uh, um, sage oh, that's lovely and uh, some roses and tomatoes uh, sunflower here so it's just about extending the garden into nooks and crannies and we like that idea you know the, the rewilding of areas and not not being too um, formal in your gardening habit here's some bamboo um, you may remember the bamboo that we featured on the plot on the plot tour this is a little root that we dug up planted here um, so this is a little child of the bamboo and if I show you this pot here I just want to show you this see that pot there 998 that was what we bought that bamboo in the um on the plot now it's, it's just massive that's what we bought it in that little pot just found that the other day so um we've got some um geraniums there here some honeysuckle growing up here this is um st john's wort which is kind of like a native herb st john's wort um, there's a lot of folklore about herbs and i think i'll do a a separate vlog about um the folklore of herbs we'll let that ambulance go by <laughs> um yeah uh, we'll, we'll i'll do a separate video about that because that is that is a, a subject in its own right here we've got uh, a palette palette which I'm sure a lot of people have actually done this actually with palettes they sort of like turn it up on its end and they put a, a, a bottom bottom in fill it with compost and here we've got growing st strawberries this is our strawberry wall um, which we've dedicated to John Keats and there's actually a saying on here nothing ever becomes real until it is experienced and John Keats name is at the bottom there so yeah you will find poetry in the garden because gardens are very poetic don't you think poetic places here we've got chili peppers habanaros um, which are not doing as well as I, I expected actually we grew these hydroponically inside and then when we brought them outside they suffered a bit because um, of the cold nights really um, but hopefully they'll pick up and we will get a, a good crop of peppers on them um, hanging baskets various things in uh, this was here when we arrived it was in a, an old barrel that was falling apart and anybody else would probably have chucked it away but we we thought well, no we're not going to chuck it away we'll give it a chance and it's like a scotch scotch pine tree it's a lovely thing to have i like the idea of having 
trees in pots um, so and it's just come on leap and leaps and bounds since we we repotted it um, and put some kind of like um, it was acidic um, uh, ericaceous compost in because I think pine trees like uh, so I'm told like ericaceous uh, if you can see it on the top there there's some pine cones we don't know what variety this is if you recognize this variety of pine tree let us know because it was just here we like the idea of that geraniums here there's some yarrow more native wildflowers peppers these are seedlings that are going to go in the uh, plot uh, the fennel bulb fennel which haven't done too well and the reason we put them on this kind of patio table is that they're prone to slugs actually just just mowing them down so we had um, basil here Thai basil which the slugs got most of them we actually salvaged some of them but just by putting them on it here and this is Viscaria which is patio mix which is a little flowering plant which are going to go in pots soon um, again uh, rainbow chard which the slugs have got so unless we put them on here they'd just mow it all down so you wouldn't get anything um, these are runner beans that need to go in uh, possibly today another bamboo from that little pot all this the, the bamboo and stuff you see is just you know yeah we just split the roots and and put them in a pot and they'll just grow bamboo will grow our little harbour here which is when we get rid of all this these uh, seed trays and stuff which will be pretty soon um and we'll we can actually sit there uh, can't sit there at the moment but we will be able to come July um, yeah our mixed border here we've got some grasses we've got this tower here which is uh, full of chives which we just cut off we cut off some yesterday for um, for a meal so we can just cut these chives off it's close to the kitchen and we just use that uh, Aquilegia here, which are coming on a, these flowers are flowering for a second time uh, this year. They're normally autumn uh, flowering, uh, April, May type of thing. So um, this is uh, sea holly, which we've never grown before. So we grew, grew them in individual pots, sea holly. But looking at the way they grow, I think we can clump them together. And that would make a better display but because we've never grown them before we didn't know how they were going to pan out so sea holly like a lovely bright blue flower on on the stem so that should be interesting to see um, there's some mint here which is coming into flower ah it's like an apple mint they're lovely um, and uh, some hessop so this is a herby bit, hess up there, and some um, lavender here, which is coming into flower. Um, yeah, I love the idea of herbs growing, but also the fact that every herb has been given its own pot, rather than trying to cram half a dozen different varieties of plants into one pot. Just... Um, keeping that pot for that herb that's important and there's some cat grass here for the local cats they haven't used it yet there you go uh yeah uh clematis which is flowering lovely i think we've got a we've got a tag to say what this is this clematis i can't see where that is now this variety but we've had that for quite some some time this is our poetry shed uh, dedicated to lord byron and um it just came about really because it needs a, a bit of a touch-up actually because 
we wanted something nice to look at, you know, rather than just a, a boring old shed, you know, uh, a lap, a lap board shed. So we decided to put poetry on it. And why not? Every shed should have poetry on. Um, yeah, carnations, great for cut flowers, um, strawberry pot there. Um, there's more tomatoes, uh, blueberries, blueberry bush here, uh, which I had, to, we had two of these, uh, but one of them died over winter and cold weathers. More poetry down the side, uh, at the shed there. Poetry should be everywhere, poetry in a garden. Um, here, see these? These things here, these little clips, they're great for hanging pots on walls and we've got loads of them pot, loads of these clips. I don't know if you can still get them now, but they're great for hanging stuff up on walls and stuff like that. So we put them on these balustrades here. Again, with nasturtiums in there. Um, here, tomatoes. Now these smaller tomatoes, in fact, I'll show you this one. See this one? That's a very special tomato, that. You see it's got two sticks in it, cerise and flame, two heritage varieties. And what we did is we did an experiment and we tried um, grafting, grafting one tomato onto another. And this is the only one that's actually survived and actually worked. So it's been an experiment this year. So we've got a flame tomato which is a beefsteak tomato as the rootstock and a cerise which is a um, cherry tomato as the top bit. We spliced them both together you can see this splice about here somewhere. You can see the rootstock there and the top bit here which is the um, tomato so it's an experiment and that's going to go out into the, onto, uh, into the greenhouse on the plot and these tomatoes that are in the smaller pots here will go out into the greenhouse um, on the plot. These um, beetroots again on these chairs because we don't want the slugs to get them on the table here we've got uh, dwarf peas here we've got grasses ornamental grasses here and we've got some flowers here some gypsilia uh, and some tagetes here, uh, some night scented stock also, which are going out onto the plot. Night scented stock here, uh, tomatoes here. All these smaller plants will go out onto the plot. There's another sea holly, which hasn't grown yet. Uh, we've got tomatoes in flowers here, which is that's a rising strobe, which we featured in the last video. Uh, here, we've got our patio pear. Which again, this is another, you can see that it's grafted. This is a patio pear graft. And this is only our second year of growing this. This grew, we got this last year as a, as a small sapling, but you can see it's really come on this year. We repotted it and it, look, we've actually got pears. You see this? Pears. That's really exciting. For the first time, we're seeing pears. So we're going to see how that goes on. Apparently, they say you, you should take the pears off on the first year. Well, this isn't the first year. This is the second year. So we're going to keep the pears on and see how they grow. Um, again, trees in pots, patio trees in pots. It's great. Uh, here we've got basil supermarket bought basil that we need to um, perhaps cut we pinch out the tops here it should bush them out we're going to try that anyway uh, in the um, um, grow house here well there's not much now because we've moved them all outside here so what's left here we've got um, ring onions which we just the other week 
and some sunflowers um, which again will be going out onto the plot we've got some runner beans here growing up these um, this is well there's a few uh, okra here now we had these in there and one night slugs came along mowed them all down so we moved them to here mowed them all down you can see just see the tops there see that it's just cut them all down and so we put them on here we've saved a few so we're going to plant these up um, we've got one uh, cut um, that's a uh, sweet corn sweet corn coming through which we're going to transplant onto the plot with the other block of sweet corn there's more beetroot there which is going to be planted out individually and so yeah tomatoes we love tomatoes we grow them everywhere so that's it um the great thing about container gardening is the ability to move stuff around and one thing that you will notice if we do a, an update to this is everything will be moved around depending upon whether it's dying off or whether it needs repotting or everything that's one of the great advantages of container gardening is the ability to move everything around and display everything as you wish it to be displayed and every year we have a rejiggle every year it looks different every year the plants are put in different places that are more advantageous um, we get a lot of sun here most of the day this container gardening this container garden is in sun uh, one thing that i forgot to point out to you is we we got these paint tins these paint tins are rather attractive so what we're going to do is i'm going to put holes in the bottom and use them possibly to plant tomatoes or various other things in they'll last a couple of seasons we probably won't last forever but they look nice don't you think they all come in different colors these different colored paintings so as we we get them we'll we'll plant them and make a feature of them so that's another thing you can do is purpose all kinds of different containers for your container gardening um, so I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the garden and um, I hope it offers some inspiration to those of you who've got yards and patio places that you may think are not suitable for gardens but actually look at the difference it makes having plants imagine this garden without plants and not to mention the wildlife that is attracted the birds and the insects all kinds of stuff you know it, it just makes for a lovely environment to uh, to exist where and and to bring the natural world into your living space so i hope you've enjoyed this vlog if you have then give us a like um subscribe to our channel and um make a comment um tell us how you you're doing your gardens tell us give us some advice on how we should do our container gardening better why not we're always open to advice so thanks for watching and we'll see you again in the next vlog bye for now <laughs>